Imagine the universe, a small planet, on this planet a tiny little country, in this country millions and millions of people, one of them, you. Who am I with all my dreams? A UN peace soldier once gave me the most beautiful description of what a real dream is. He said, a true dream is something that ho hovers somewhere on your horizon. Doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, and you know that if you try really hard, you, are, you stay persistent, flexible. You, you, you find the right people, get a little help. You keep your sense of humor that maybe, maybe this one dream is possible and this way dreams are meant to challenge you to become the best version of you. My name is Manon Ossefort, I'm a professional theatre maker and actress from the Netherlands and um, because of the project that I'm going to tell you about today I've um, this also challenged me, this project also challenged me to become a better version of myself. This project also challenged me to become a writer, a photographer and a filmmaker. During my educational years in the Amsterdam School of the Arts, I learned that for every story you want to tell, you need to look for the right form. So sometimes it's words, other times it's an image you create or a choreography. But a year before I graduated of the theatre school in Amsterdam, I invented this story and when the concept was finished, I realised that this story would only be truly fascinating, hilarious, funny, um, inspiring and hopefully worthwhile if I would play this story out in reality. As a theatre maker I invented a, an adventure story, a journey of a girl on a tractor, a journey to the end of the world and back. But what is the end of the world? If I were a child I would say the end of the world, that's the South Pole, because it sounds like you're going to the moon on a tractor, but maybe, maybe it is possible. And as an adult, I immediately said, the end of the world, that's a country where there's war, a famine, where people lose hope. That's the end of the world. Both voices inside me said, go. And that's when I thought, maybe we should just do that. What if I start traveling from Holland, from the village where I was born, on this tractor, all the way to the geographical South Pole, then probably I'll, on my route to the South Pole, um, I'll come through many countries, which as an adult you could call the end of the world. And I thought, I will get on this tractor with the vision of a child, open-minded, curious, and drive to the South Pole, and on my way, wherever I... Eh? Adults would say it's the end of the world in countries where there's war, where there's famine. Everywhere on my way, I'll look for inspiring stories, people, initiatives that somehow prove that the end of the world doesn't exist. Because you can always find somebody who doesn't give up hope and keeps trying and this way inspires others. Maybe we should just do this. Doe maar gewoon en doe je al gek genoeg. In Holland we have the saying, just do normal and then you're already crazy enough. Just do normal and then you're already crazy. Just do normal, just do, do. I, I, I made a, a theatre performance with the tractor and this was one of the lines that I used in this performance. And I also found out, ooh, I'm shaky. I also found out that the moment you're inspired by a dream, a vision, something you really wish to do, you, you hope to accomplish, you wish that will become reality, that also the greatest fears awaken inside yourself. And the only thing I found out about this fear is that 
it proves that your heart is involved. That this dream is something you really, really want to do. Otherwise, it wouldn't matter. And the only thing I have learned so far about conquering your fears and approaching fear is, um, and I don't know if it's worthwhile, but it's that fear is only useful if you can somehow um, turn it into a tool. So write, make a list of all the things that you're most afraid of, um, getting uh, no water, no fuel, uh, being harassed, whatever, and, and make that list. And then afterwards you find out that you have this most practical to-do list of like all the things that you need to do to make your project as um, uh, possible as possible. Uh, yes. Um, and I also found out that the moment you're not, your project is still an idea and you look at it from afar, it looks like a, this huge mountain or, or this, this, this cliff of doom that you're walking toward, that you will walk towards once you start like trying to realize it. But that the moment you stop thinking and you start doing and you just take that first little step that you know that you can take and that it's safe and you j and then the next and the next you will find out that this cliff that you're walking towards which you perceived as a, a cliff is actually um, well it, it might be there but the moment that you reach that 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 area then you there's always like a small little road around or when there's a wall like a, a symbolical wall blocking your path um which okay now i have to admit that i started setting up this seemingly impossible journey with the idea that i'll try to do it and the moment i see this big sign saying stop or this wall eh? and i can't go around it um that's when I, uh, phew, I don't have to go on a tractor to the South Pole. But the re then reality was that whenever I, there was a wall or somebody saying stop, it somehow, I, got, I somehow suddenly thought, maybe I, I can just walk around this wall or does somebody have a hammer and I can just like knock it down or, or I'll build a ladder and I'll climb over it or will you give me a hand? Um, and so I was never stopped. This um, evolved in a theatre festival in the north of Holland, June 2005, the Uro Festival. Um, I played my tractor theatre performance, uh, a performance that I made with the tractor as a means of communication uh, while travelling and a gift to the people that I was um, a guest of, that I was visiting. Um, I played this theatre performance on, on this festival and the last day of the festival, on the Schelling, um, I drove out of the theatre performance into reality and started my journey. It was the most beautiful day of my life. Like finally, after a year of preparation, this seemingly impossible event, I would just simply start doing it. There wasn't any money. Uh, there was no sponsor that, that, that had the courage to finance this project. But I thought even if it's only my, like my summer holiday, I, I have to at least try. So I started traveling through Holland, playing on... Uh, different theatre festivals uh, at the border um, uh, I was waved goodbye by the two mayors of um, two like villages, one in Belgium one in Holland Burgemeester Jan and Jan, Mayor Jan and Jan under their umbrellas, it was a rainy day wearing their chains and they they all together with a, like a big group of people, they all came to say goodbye to me goodbye tractor girl safe journey Day two, out of Holland, by accident, I drove onto the highway around Antwerp. Uh, my tractor has a maximum speed of 20 kilometers per hour. I was driving in Antwerp, uh, there were roadworks, so the, the highway sign was covered up, they found out later. And I was driving towards this giant building, I think it was the court, like the international court or something. And, I, and, and when I... And I drove underneath that building and coming out again, suddenly in front of me there was this 
four-lane highway looming towards me and cars started passing me by with 120 kilometers per hour and I, I felt like this demented old farmer and I thought I need to get out where is the sign out and I just put on my flashlights and all my uh, indication lights and I will just looked for the exit and just before I reached the exit I was caught by the highway police of Belgium and they took me into custody for two and a half weeks I was stuck in Belgium and from Canada, New Zealand, Germany, Holland, Belgium, France, a camera crews, photographers, uh, radio stations phoned because they all wanted to hear this one joke of this girl wanting to go to the South Pole on a tractor and getting stuck in Belgium. And I thought, if this is the beginning of my journey, my what, what will happen? But I can tell you one thing. Belgium was the biggest horror story of my whole journey. I've traveled over four years, 38,000 kilometers, 22 countries, um, Kosovo, Bosnia, Sudan, Zimbabwe, Northern Uganda, Kenya where there was a famine, and I've uh, always been safe. I somehow found out that if you go into the world with an open mind, with respect for others, that you can travel to the end of the world and back and be safe. Okay, and always do what your grandmother says. As a girl, don't go out in the streets when, it dark, when it's dark. When you're in a... Be decent, wear decent clothes, things like that. Now I have to t tell a small um, anecdote. Um, sometimes I was in a in a, 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 a place like, in, for instance, in Tanzania, where there are many tourists and then local men could think like, oh, she's a tourist and they're, they're different. The girl, tourist girls are different than our local girls. So I had this one, one moment, this one guy walking beside me and I've, I'd been traveling for two years then already. And he said, hi, hi, where do you sleep? And I turned around to him and I just said, told him, my Grandmother always tells me, uh, never tell a man where you sleep unless you're married to him. And he needed to think for a bit because his English wasn't that good. And then before he knew it, he like even though he maybe didn't want it, but he started smiling like my grandmother would say that too. Never tell a man where you sleep unless you're married to him. And he just started smiling, and then he said, "Well, <laughs> like you've got a cool grandmother," and and, uh, and 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 immediately started approaching me the way people normally would approach each other. I've always been safe. Never a mango stolen from my tractor. I've travelled through Bosnia and Kosovo, collecting, uh, yeah, um, playing my theatre performance in a prison where um, young youngsters were, eh? uh, who had done bad things in the war, but who were also vic victims of this same war, uh, were being kept and the, the guards made me afraid to do my theatre performance there. Um, and also with my theatre performance, I, I asked people to um, write down their their dreams, their wishes. So I've, I've through my theatre performance, I've been collecting dreams and wishes from people like everywhere I went. And in this, in this prison, um, I was a little, uh, they, they made me a little bit afraid, but I did my performance anyway. And at the end of the performance, when People wrote down their wishes and I came past with this basket with, filled with sand so they could plant their wishes. Because I thought, in the whole world, people will, eh, no, uh, will get this symbol. A dream, it's like a seed. You have to plant it in the ground, look after it. It needs rain, it needs sunshine, and then maybe it can grow out to this big tree. Um, when I walked with this basket filled with wishes through the prison in, in Kosovo, it turned completely silent and the guards as well as all the girls and boys who were prisoner in that prison just planted these wishes of their, them so deep into the ground and that it suddenly struck me 
th that suddenly like the importance of the dream struck me because it felt like this was their hope this was their hope for for everything they wanted in their life this was the hope they needed to keep um to be able to build up that country torn by war and they knew that if it it would probably not be built up in their generation but if they would lose that hope their children or their children's children would never have a better future and um and also that it, that they didn't have a passport well nobody in kosovo has a passport and can travel outside of kosovo so also their wishes their dreams for seeing the world seeing life um somehow through giving this one small paper with a wish would travel eh? the, the dad wish would go on this on the back of this tractor and it would start traveling the world and then uh, and and go on these adventures and then the years after I very often i got like um, uh, every now and then i got a message from the 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 the, the prison director a, a very beautiful strong woman and she and she would tell me about these prisoners asking like where is my dream uh, where is she going is she, is she still safe what has she like what were the adventures of this girl on this tractor and will she make it to the south pole thousands of stories collected along the way sudan Ethiopia, Kenya, every country where there was war, I heard people speak about, um, this is uh, about, uh, sorry, every country where there was war, I found out that they were almost like the safest countries for me to travel through. So before I traveled into Sudan, I was quite scared to go into the country because 30 years of stories of war between the north and the south, the Darfur stories. And when I was there, everybody, all the local people, they were so hospitable. And and, and I was so surprised. And, and, and they all kept telling me, it's like, please tell the outside world that we are good people. Eh? We don't want all these problems. Please, please tell them that it's the it's the government, it's the oil that um, that create all the problems. But we are good people, um, and that made me really surprised. Too many stories to tell, and now I don't know how many more. Um, after three and a half years, three years and eight months, uh, 38,000 kilometers, I arrived at the Cape of Good Hope with thousands of dreams on the back of my tractor, hoping that all these wishes one day or have eh, will come out. And right now, at the moment, I'm planning the South Pole expedition by tractor. It's a long story. It took a long time, like, I, and I'm I'm working on all these four years of film material, like that I filmed while traveling on a documentary movie, um, and this December, I will finally go the final leg of this travel, the final leg of this journey, go with my tractor all the way from South Africa to the to the south pole so that there i find I, and, and i hope that people will will follow this last leg of the tractor girl story and um uh, uh, and there as uh, like a, a real life ending of a children's book sort of story i hope to build this snowman with the dreams of the world in his belly because you can't build like a put a flag down there and say, this is my country. No, on, on Antarctica, the continent where there's never been war, which is just as harsh, rough, as it is um, vulnerable, just like with dreams of people. I hope to build this snowman with the dreams of the world in its belly and then after wish that, I don't know, somewhere in the world, because of the media, because of this tiny news article uh, somewhere in Korea, in Sudan, in Holland, doesn't matter, there's this one person who reads or sees the story and thinks to, them, to himself, wow, if that is possible, if you can drive a tractor all the way to the South Pole, then maybe this one dream that I have, maybe it's also possible. Maybe I should just do it. Okay, and then there are many other smart things or clever things or that I can say, but this is it for now.